So today I would like to talk about conditions of consciousness and different kinds of, um, if you may call them conditions of consciousness, because when we speak about spirituality, most of the time we, we still consider just solely our physical, physical aspect of reality, our physical self. And when we get interested in spirituality, we start dividing life into spiritual and non-spiritual. We cannot embrace uh, the flow of existence as a whole. And this becomes usually a problem in our lives because at the end of the day, we realize that it's not a natural way of being. So uh, very often we tend to go into extremes. Today we're spiritual, tomorrow we're not spiritual, today we're eating healthy, tomorrow we indulge. So we cannot find this middle point. Uh, the whole point of spirituality is balance, the whole point of health is balance. Uh, very often we wonder, we spend a lot of time, you know, performing different spiritual actions like we exercise, we eat healthy, and yet we still age, yet we still have issues. So we cannot understand what consciousness actually is because we usually consider by consciousness we consider something in a way outside of ourselves and yet we do not understand that our body is just a fruit of that which our consciousness is. So we wonder about the aging process. A lot of people go into spirituality in order to look young, be healthy, stop aging, yet we cannot understand the conditions of consciousness. And the conditions of consciousness are mental, emotional conditions, spiritual conditions, which means our uh, deeply inherited uh, beliefs and ideas about existence. So even though we may eat healthy, we may exercise, we may do a lot of things, and yet we might not, um, our body fails us, or there are other issues in our life that uh, keep us in misalignment. So in a way, spiritual wisdom lies in living the experience of life and being still in alignment or in order to obtain wisdom, it's not enough to read books or follow what you read temporarily. It's about living life because you may hear a lot of pieces of advice from different sources and yet you have to live your life. Sometimes you just have to have an experience. Sometimes you just have to manifest, not sometimes, most of the time we just manifest what's within ourselves. And then we realize that it's very far from our spiritual ideals. And so we face then um, conflicts within, we kind of have this um, conflict between the reality of ourselves and what we intend to have or what we aim at life, uh, I mean aim at in life. And so the thing is that most of the people just have so contradictive ideas in their minds. They go into different extremes. They, they cannot find that middle point, that balance that is called natural spirituality. So they dream, they read this, they get excited, they follow it for a while, then they read something else or they follow one diet and then they switch to the other. These so-called actions, even spiritual actions, have nothing to do with natural spirituality or being in yoga, being in alignment, being one's natural self. Because once you are your natural self, you are, you can clearly see the conditionings and so you start dissolving these conditionings with awareness, recognizing the patterns of conditionings, the patterns of limited beliefs and so on, and your natural expression of flow 
of existence. And so when your self-expression, a flow of existence becomes effortless, you don't waste that much of mental, emotional energy because most of the time we waste energy um, towards um, the reality, the projected reality. So our life is simply a constant response to the triggers, to the reality. So we don't, we are not aligned with the reality. So let's say if you're peaceful inside, the reality somewhat is still chaotic. And so we will keep on struggling until we, and refining ourselves until our reality, our body, is that very reflection of our so-called um, balanced, peaceful, if you will, enlightened consciousness. And enlightened consciousness does not mean that you are some superhero or a super person. It means that you are living your flow. You are that flow. You are that natural being, effortless, completely aligned within yourself and with the reality, with the natural world. And until you reach that uh, point of natural flow, you keep on struggling, you keep on identifying inner currents which are opposing your natural flow, those currents which trigger you, those currents that create negative uh, manifestations, even though consciously you are very willing, you're very, very keen on having a certain way of life or certain manifestation, and yet your undercurrents within your consciousness um, have to be expressed and so consciousness itself purges and uh, manifests them uh, in the form of your external reality and you keep on manifesting you keep on fighting with the external reality until you uh, realign with within yourself and surrender and then this uh, many people think of surrender like okay I, I let it go for now I, I, I let it be for now I, I don't think about it anymore for now and then uh, okay for a while maybe things just flow and then again something happens so these things happen this way because we simply do not know how to maintain balance and spiritual practice is nothing else rather than the cultivation of that uh, natural being and that natural being is when you are in a balanced absorbed state so you don't waste your energy um, we many people who are on a spiritual path or they believe that they're on a spiritual path of evolution keep on striving keep on um, exerting themselves exhausting themselves through spiritual action without a clear without any clarity or clear realization that spiritual action uh, may sometimes benefit your body temporarily or may uh, keep your ego satisfied, spiritual ego satisfied for a while, but eventually uh, its charge will be exhausted and you will keep on looking for something else. And the biggest, the, the root, uh, the biggest problem, or you may say the root of um, aging or energy loss lies in, or is, in this particular sort of process where we lose our energy through different actions and these actions you may think are about the body bodily actions they are not about the body they are the movements of consciousness the movements of consciousness that's why yogis speak about absorption which is chitvritin roda which means the immovable absorbed in its own 
self-consciousness the consciousness does not that does not perform action the same applies to celibacy and the actual secret about uh, not to not losing energy through the copulation a copulation with reality not the, the physical copulation with other human beings which is a natural process as natural as intaking one's food um, so the e exhaustion comes from constant conscious dissatisfaction when consciousness constantly spins turns uh, searches um, so it's not that the action of the body that e exerts the the conscious energy it's not that the action of the body that ages us and causes us misalignment diseases and issues but it's the conditionings of the of the consciousness that are like those undercurrents or opposite currents or whirlpools within the consciousness that keep on uh, spinning within the consciousness uh, without uh, allowing it to be in peace when we speak about peace we, we don't speak about spiritual hypocrisy when we just pretend like we keep our eyes closed and sit in some kind of a um, p position uh, uh, static position it's not about that spiritual peace spiritual absorption meditation yoga are one and the same thing is when consciousness is deeply absorbed that consciousness starts nurturing its vehicle its vessel its body so that this body does not age the root of aging lies in the conditioning of the consciousness in the corruption of the conscious whatever you call it in the distortions of consciousness that keep on pulling the focus outwards so if you want to be healthy if you want to at least attempt at evolving spiritually you have to understand that the spiritual action will not lead you far in this regard and only when your consciousness learns to be focused within to be when you learn to be within your body rather than outside or with other bodies empowering other bodies other aspects of the projected reality only then you start realizing what evolution is what knowledge is what youth is the youth of existence the youthful existence is not about medicines or food they may help you say 30 percent in this process if you eat healthy healthily if you uh, have he lead a healthy lifestyle yes it may prolong your life this is called longevity but it will not stop the decaying process in the long term it will not lead to evolution to further evolution and evolution does not mean self-healing at this point yes the first step so was the evolution so called the preparational stage stages are self-healing self-refinement realizing conditionings dissolving them and so on but we do not arrive at the real point of evolving where you start deep transformation that results on your body on your inner the flow or the way you perceive the reality until this work has been done and the majority of people only come up to this point of self-healing and refinement because our current existence is filled with traumatic corrupt um, distortions or perceptions of reality and responses and we lose ourselves in these responses we lose ourselves to the projected reality without this realization 
And the way we lose this energy means our immunity declines, our spiritual shield is becomes less and less potent. And so we become the food to this projected reality. All the, it means that we become more susceptible for viruses and bacteria because the immunity of the body means the power of one's consciousness, the shield of consciousness that one emits. And this shield is like radiation. The more potent the radiation is, the stronger will be the immunity, your physical strength, potency, and resistance to whatever diseases. That's why it is written in a kind of a camouflaged, concealed language that yoga leads to health and longevity because yoga means absorption. Yoga means uh, being in balance, being in a flow, in a natural flow where there are no more traumatic responses to the reality but one's natural self-expression towards the reality and that's it. And if the reality challenges others, then when you are in that natural state, naturally spiritual, naturally aligned, a lot of things do not affect you because there is no traumatic response. And I do not mean dissociation from the reality because there are mental uh, issues and emotional issues when uh, people dissociate from the reality and this is another type of traumatic response. The natural being and natural spirituality is not about dissociation, it's about being healthily emotional, healthily interacting with the reality without attaching or clinging or creating any kind of uh, connections within oneself or uh, with the reality, not creating the connection between your self-identity and the reality because the traumatic response means you create a link, a connection with the uh, projected reality because you tr you're trying to find a sense of self in that projected reality and this is a traumatic response. This is a spiritual narcissism. This is all different kinds of mental and emotional imbalances, issues, and uh, diseases even, if you will. So when we create a sense of self through the projected reality, we uh, leave that part of self within that projected reality, or we leave a link a bridge between our self and that projected reality. Through this link we lose our energy and that's why we age. Because there are holes in our conscious being. Our conscious being does not remain intact. And to remain intact means to be fully protected by one spiritual being. This being is aligned with the higher reality unconditional reality and interacts with the projected reality to the point of necessity. But once we create a sense of self through the projected reality, we have extended that point of necessity into codependence on the external reality and its conditionings. And that's how we lose ourselves to this projected reality. That's how we uh, become sick and age. The root of all the sickness and aging lies in our consciousness and its conditionings which manifest eventually in, in mental uh, or into mental and emotional imbalances and also then uh, abnormal, chaotic, uh, irrational physical action that lead us to, you may say, simply suffering. And this suffering is nothing but the result of our misalignment. When people say, oh, it's a karmic payback, it's a karmic 
uh, this and karmic that. This karma is one's body, that which carries the vessel of consciousness, that which is the manifested consciousness on this dimension or in this existence. And so when your karma or the vessel suffers, it means the consciousness is corrupt and you have to address the corruption of consciousness so that you realign yourself and understand truly what longevity, what evolution, what immortality and spirituality and spiritual knowledge are. Thank you very much.